Hello dear students, today's topic is mass defect and nuclear binding energy. So before we start our lesson, let's quickly go through lesson objectives. There are four lesson objectives for this lesson. So the first is to learn new terms used in nuclear physics. The second one is to understand the physical meaning of mass defect in atomic nuclei. The third one is to determine the mass defect of atomic nuclei. And the last one is to apply the formula of nuclear binding energy in problem solving. There are five key terms that are very important to know. So let's quickly go through the pronunciation and their translations. So the first term is mass defect. The second term is nuclear binding energy. The third term is nuclei. The next term is stellar evolution. And finally, atomic mass unit. In nuclear physics, a convenient way to represent the mass of atomic particles is called atomic mass unit so before we talk about atomic mass unit let's quickly see the masses of atomic particles in kilograms for instance mass of proton is equal to 1.673 times 10 to the power of minus 27 kilograms in the same way, we have mass of the neutron, approximately the same as the mass of proton. This one is mass of electron and mass of carbon atom is 1.995 times 10 to the power of minus 26 kilograms. As you see, these numbers are very small, yet very difficult to pronounce because they are bulky numbers here but if we use atomic mass units which is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the power of minus 27 kilograms it would be much easier to show the masses of atomic particles for instance the mass of proton in the atomic mass unit will be 1.00728 atomic mass units. In the same way, the mass of neutron will be like this. This one is mass of electron. And finally, the mass of carbon atom will be 12 atomic units as well as atomic mass unit there is a convenient way for measuring energy in nuclear physics which is called electron volt ev one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joules of course you might think that this energy is too small but on atomic level, this energy is enough to accelerate one single proton from 0 meters per second to 14 kilometers per second. Now let's talk about the relation between mass and energy. So for instance, let's take a system with mass M. And as the research of Albert Einstein has shown, there is a direct relation between mass and energy of the system. And this relation can be formulated by this equation, which says that the internal energy of the system is equal to mass times c square, where e0 is internal energy of the system, m is mass of this system, 
and C is speed of light. We know that speed of light is equal to 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. So it means that if the internal energy of a system goes from first level to the second level and changes by some delta E, it means that the mass of the system has to also change by some delta M. And in that case, the delta E, the change in internal energy, will be equal to delta M times C squared. From the previous formula, we can understand that the ratio between change in internal energy and change in mass is equal to C squared, which is equal to 9 times 10 to the power of 16 joules per kilogram. And this is when we use the change in internal energy as joules and when we measure the change in mass as kilograms. But when we use atomic mass unit and electron volts, this ratio will have a different number, which is equal to 931.5 times 10 to the power of 6 electron volts per atomic mass unit. Of course, knowing this ratio is very essential in solving the problems in nuclear physics. Now let's talk about the mass defect. In order to understand the mass defect, we have to know three letters. The first one is A, the second one is Z, and the third one is N. Letter A stands for mass of a nucleus. Letter Z stands for number of protons and letter N stands for number of neutrons. If we think logically, we can predict that the mass of a nucleus and total mass of all nucleons in the nucleus are equal. But as experiments show, the total mass of all nucleons in the nucleus is greater than the mass of a nucleus. So, A is smaller than Z times MP plus N times MN. Here, on the right side of inequality, this one is total number, total mass of all protons, and this one is total mass of all neutrons. The difference between right side of the inequality and the left side of this inequality is called mass defect and is shown by delta m mathematically the mass defect can be formulated as the equation shown below so delta m equals z times mp plus n times mn minus a so let me show one example related to mass defect. Let's take an example of lithium nucleus. We know that the delta M has the following formula and all we need to do is to find out the values of all variables here. We know that we have mass of proton and mass of neutron in atomic mass units. From a periodic table, we have Z equals 3, N equals 4, and the mass of the nucleus of lithium atom is equal to 6.941 atomic mass units. And all we need to do is to substitute all the variables and calculate for delta M. So, 
you can try now to calculate the delta m by yourself and just check. So by using a simple calculator, we come to the conclusion that delta m for a lithium nucleus will be equal to 0 0.115 atomic mass units. Now let's talk about nuclear binding energy. So by the definition, it is energy released during formation of nucleus from separate nucleons. So if we were to form a lithium ion from three protons and four neutrons, it means that some energy will be released during this process. And this energy is called nuclear binding energy. On the other hand, nuclear binding energy is energy required to overcome strong nuclear force and separate all nucleons from each other. So if we take lithium atom and lithium nucleus in order to separate all nucleons from each other, we need to add some energy to the system and separate all nucleons from each other. And also this delta E is called nuclear binding energy. Now let's give an example for nuclear binding energy. Once again let's take lithium nucleus. So in the beginning we said that we have a definite number for delta E and delta M ratio and also we have calculated for the mass defect of lithium nucleus. All we need to do is to calculate the delta E which is equal to 931.5 times 10 to the power of 6 electron volts per atomic mass unit times delta M. So if we substitute the mass defect Instead of delta M, we will have to calculate that and finally we will have delta E equals to 107.6 times 10 to the power of 6 electron volts, which is equal to 107.6 mega electron volts. That's all for today. See you, goodbye.